Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. That's the name we've given to our unboxing video series. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question I'm answering is, what's in this box? What I have in my hand here is a copy of The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine from Cosmos. This is a three to five player cooperative trick taking card game that I gotta admit, I am a huge fan of. So first off, I have to hu say huge thanks to um, Kevin Reno, local Windsor gamer, who actually gave me a copy of this game. So thanks for that, Kevin. Um, greatly appreciated. I have played this game, but only on tabletop or on uh, board game arena, not on uh, the actual physical game. So I'm looking forward to checking out the physical game, plus seeing the physical components for the first time because all I've seen is digital components up till now. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open and I'm going to show you what you get with a copy of the crew, the quest for planet nine. All right. So first off, I'm going to have to take the shrink wrap off of this copy of the crew. Should be easy enough to do. There's lots of nice bits to grab onto here. Didn't even need a knife for that one. All right. Taking a look at what we get in the crew. All right, so starting right off, we have the rule book. And what's interesting is it says right here, start reading here, start playing from page 11. That seems to start reading here, start beginning to play from page 11. That is an impressively thick rule book, but I know part of the reason why is there are 50 scenarios included in this game. So here we have the rules. You got a nice sidebar summarizing pictures of actual game components. I'm sure a big bunch of this is telling you how to play a trick taking game, showing off the different suits, how Trump works, and so on. Uh, this is showing the communication system. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. I am just going to quickly flip forward to. There's uh, rules for di difficulty, different degrees of difficulty. You've got explanations of the symbols for how to how to understand the logbook. Playing with two players. So despite the fact it does say the game is for three to five players, there is a variant for playing two players. Um, you've got some other tips and variants here. And that's it. That is the main rule book. So we are looking at, i got to say, 21 pages of rules for a trick-taking game. Sounds really high. But if you've never played a game like Euchre, I can get it. Like, it takes a bit to explain that whole system of you have to follow the, the lead suit and so on. Um, then we have the mission log book, which is just the other half of this book folded in half. And there are 50 missions in here. I realize some people consider this a campaign game, so I don't want to spoil anything. I will just open up the first page. Uh, there's actually a spot to record information on how well you did. Um, so who your crew were, when you started, when you finished, how many attempts you had. A little how to use this book so actually since we haven't gotten to the first mission i will go forward and there's our first missions you don't want to see this stuff because you want to discover that on your own all right we got a punch board with something already punched out yep all kinds of stuff already punched out so this is so well cut and half the stuff is already punched out as i open it up and throw stuff all over the floor so yes we have uh, a whole bunch of the punch boards in here I did just crack the shrink in this. We're up in here. So you got a whole bunch of number counters and stuff here. So we're going to take those out first. See what we got here. So know what I have played this game before. So these are to indicate things like what you need to draw first, second, third. Um, so if you had a card with a one on it here, that would just mean you need to play. That card has to, someone has to take that trick first. And then there's symbols like this card has to be taken before that card. This one, so that's what these are for. So like the one with one hashes has to be taken before the none. The one with two has to be taken before the one. Um, then this one means the last trick has to take that card. So we have that. Um, then we have the communication symbols. So these are used to mark whether you've communicated or not during your turn. It's one for each of the five players. They are two-sided. And then we have the start player token here, which uh, you assemble to be a little of the commander token. And then the communication token for at the start of the turn if you're going to pass cards or not. Nice and simple, one-sided card. Then 
what I wasn't expecting at all here is um, smaller cards. Small, uh, a smaller hobbit sized cards, as I like to call them, half size cards. So it looks like these are what you use. Okay, that makes sense. So what you have is, is basically a small version of the entire deck um, for determining what cards are needed for the tricks. So what cards are needed for the missions. So what you have in here is numbers 1 through 9 in blue. Also in green. And pink. And in yellow for the small set of cards. The other thing that's nice to see is for people who do have color blindness issues, there is a symbol to represent all of these in addition to the color. And again, I'll throw that down here with the pink because those will show up nice and good. You can see it has a square in the middle of the pink cards. Now what we'll have here is a matching deck with full-size cards going through one through nine in blue. We'll get these little counters out of the way. One through nine in green. One through nine in pink. And one through nine in orange. But then we also have one through four in rockets. In this particular game, rockets are always trump. And then we have the player. These go into your player order. Um, and what this is for is if you're using the communication system, which I'm not going to explain here because I'm not here to teach the game. But there's one of these for each player. And these are just like little asteroid or I don't know that's supposed to be Pluto and one of the things I really liked I noticed online is that when you put the cards together they actually make an overall picture which I thought was pretty cool so I'm just going to show you three of the pink cards here to kind of see how you get an overall vista I thought that was a really nice touch card quality here is excellent um there is a linen finish on the cards which I'm trying to yeah you can kind of see it there so the cards do have a linen finish to them they are standard playing card sized um cards they've got a slight warp i admit to them from out of the box but you know what that's fine they're going to get shuffled card backs are nice i love the artwork on these cards um what i didn't notice is that it duplicates so the artwork on the one two three cards are the same for each suit i thought each suit actually had a different set of artwork but it's just different colors uh, and that's it so four mini decks matching the four large decks and four trump some cards here, some bunch boards, and that is it for the crew. The Quest for Planet Nine, a cooperative trick-taking game for three to five players or two players with a variant. Now, one of the things that's slightly disappointing, though I don't expect much from it, um, not much of a box insert, just cardboard here. And to be honest, I'm going to punch these right now. And I'll put the, here's your little the commander token, commander token. That'll fit in here. You are going to have to take the commander token apart to fit them back in the box. No, if I lay it down, it fits. We're going to punch these out. And then we're going to grab all these cards. Toss them on this side. The smaller cards, toss them on that side. It's not the best insert, but you know what, it works. Rule book with log book. All good to go. There you have everything back in the box for the crew, the quest for Planet Nine. So there you have what you get in the box for the crew, the quest for Planet Nine from Cosmos Games. Again, this is a cooperative deck builder game for three to five players, not deck builder, sorry, trick taking game for three to five players. Um, each individual game can be played really quick. Um, 50 different missions in here. Card quality is excellent. I, I know I like the game. Components are as good or better than I expected. I wasn't expecting the Hobbit-sized cards. That was something that's different. It makes sense because that way you can keep track of who's looking for which tricks and have something in front of you. So very impressed by the looks of this. Um, I, I like it. I dig it. Pretty much what you expect from a card game. Component quality is good. Punch boards are good. Linen finish on the cards. Thumbs up on that. Rule book looks nice and clear. Though I'm still a little surprised it takes 22 pages to explain a trick-taking game. But you know what? If you haven't played one before, it takes a bit to explain things like Trump and following the lead and so on. So there you have my unboxing of The Crew, The Quest from Planet Nine. I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop. You can find our content at TabletopBellhop.com or all over the web on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter as TabletopBellhop, one word. 
If you dig this video, be sure to tip the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. That's it for me tonight. Good night and game on.